you can recycle used oil indefinitely. Used oil, it's good to the last drop. Oh, good, you're here. I'm Ollie, the oil drop. Nice to meet you. You know, this is your lucky day because we're about to watch a video about me, used oil. This video is going to explain what used oil is, how to manage it, and why EPA encourages recycling it, rather than doing something else with it that might not be so great for the environment. In other words, this video is about keeping me alive and you out of trouble. So, what do you say we take a look? The unique properties of crude and synthetic oils make them vital to thousands of industrial, commercial, and consumer applications. Hydraulic oils, metal working fluids, engine oils, and transmission fluids are just a few of the many uses of oil. In America, we use over two billion gallons of oil in applications such as these every year. Oil that has become contaminated through use must eventually be replaced with clean oil. But what happens to the used oil? The answer depends on you, individuals who actually generate and handle used oil. Fortunately, used oil is a recyclable resource. According to EPA, used oil destined for recycling does not have to be managed as a hazardous waste. Instead, EPA issued the Used Oil Management Standards. These standards were designed to promote recycling by encouraging handlers to follow certain good housekeeping practices when managing the used oil. You are considered a handler of used oil if you fall into one or more of the following categories. Generators, individuals or facilities who generate used oil, for example, car repair shops, metalworking facilities, and fleet maintenance facilities. Collection centers and aggregation points, facilities that store used oil they accept from other generators or that consolidate oil they generate themselves. Collection centers and aggregation points cannot accept shipments in excess of 55 gallons at a time. Both accept used oil from do-it-yourselfers. Transporters, companies that deliver used oil to other used oil handlers. Transporters also include transfer facilities, which are areas where shipments of used oil are held for more than 24 hours, but not longer than 35 days. Processors and re-refiners, facilities that blend or remove impurities from used oil so that it can be burned for energy recovery or reused. Included in this category are re-refiners who process used oil so that it can be reused as a new product, such as a lubricant, and recycled again and again. Burners, facilities that burn used oil that fails to meet certain EPA specifications. This is referred to as off-spec used oil. Marketers, handlers who fall in one of the above categories and who either direct shipments of off-spec used oil to be burned as fuel in regulated devices, or who claim their used oil meets EPA's fuel specifications. Handlers who market products, such as lubricants, reclaim from used oil that will not be burned for energy recovery, are not regulated as used oil handlers. The purpose of the used oil management standards is to protect human health and the environment by ensuring safe handling of used oil, maximizing recycling, and minimizing disposal. Because used oil is a recyclable resource, EPA assumes that handlers will opt for recycling. In the standards, this is referred to as the recycling presumption. The standards are also designed to discourage handlers from certain practices, such as mixing their oil with hazardous waste. Such mixtures are not only more difficult to recycle, they are also subject to the hazardous waste regulations. If you think you have used oil, or if you regularly handle lubricants, heat transfer fluids, or hydraulic fluids, you need to understand the used oil management standards and how they affect your facility. This video is designed to help you determine whether and how the management standards apply to you. To do this, you must answer the following three questions. One, does the oil you handle meet EPA's definition of regulated used oil? Two, when is used oil regulated as a hazardous waste? 
And three, how must you manage your used oil? Although you may find it difficult to determine whether the oil you generate should be managed as regulated used oil or as hazardous waste, the used oil management standards themselves are straightforward. If you have any questions regarding the status of your oil, help is available. EPA has established a hotline that is staffed with individuals who are knowledgeable about the used oil management standards and all of the regulations in the Resource Conservation and Recovery Act, or RICRA. The hotline also maintains a list of state contacts who can provide you with local information. This video only provides information on the federal regulations. Your state may have more stringent regulations for managing used oil and hazardous waste. So what do you think? Is this video for you? Are you ready to move into part one? This part shows how to figure out whether your oil meets EPA's definition of used oil. Of course, feel free to fast forward through the tape if you want to go straight to your favorite section. Each new section begins with a screen that looks like this. Are you ready? Okay, roll them. The substance you handle may be managed as regulated used oil rather than hazardous waste if it meets EPA's definition of regulated used oil. In the management standards, EPA defines regulated used oil as any oil, either refined from crude oil or a synthetic oil, that has become contaminated by physical or chemical impurities through use. EPA's definition of used oil includes oils used as lubricants, heat transfer fluids, hydraulic fluids, and similar oils used for other purposes. Let's take a closer look at each of these. Lubricants include materials used as engine oil, metal working fluids, compressor oils, gear oils, turbine oils, and some emulsions. Heat transfer fluids refer to used quench oils, heating media, refrigeration oils, and electrical insulation oils. Transformer oils, however, may contain PCBs and should be segregated from other oils and managed according to the Toxic Substances Control Act, or TOSCA. Hydraulic fluids include used transmission fluids and industrial hydraulic oils. Oil that leaks or drips from machinery while in use is likewise considered used oil. If you have similar oils used for other purposes, contact the RICRA hotline or your state agency for further guidance. There are a number of other materials that EPA does not define as used oil and therefore are not subject to the used oil management standards. They may, however, be regulated as hazardous waste. These substances include any product derived from crude or synthetic that is used as a solvent, or other petroleum-derived products such as antifreeze and kerosene. Waste oil that has not been used, such as fuel oil that has been spilled or is left over in a storage tank, is also not considered used oil, nor are animal and vegetable oils, even when they are used as lubricants or in hydraulic pumps. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, is this it? You mean I can manage my oil according to the standards if it meets that simple definition? Before you can follow the management standards, you have to be absolutely, positively sure that you do not have to follow the hazardous waste regs. But once again, you're in luck, because that's exactly what the next section of this tape is going to help you figure out. So let us return then to Used Oil Theater, Part 2. Once you've determined that your oil was refined from crude or is synthetic, and that it became contaminated through one of the uses described earlier, your next step is to determine the regulatory path you must follow. You see, even if your used oil does meet EPA's definition of regulated used oil, there's still a possibility that you'll be required to manage it as a hazardous waste, either if your used oil was mixed with regulated hazardous waste following use, or if you will dispose of the used oil rather than recycle it. Let's start by looking at what is meant by used oil mixed with hazardous waste. EPA distinguishes two categories of regulated hazardous waste, listed hazardous waste and characteristic hazardous waste. Listed hazardous wastes are those that appear on a list in 40 CFR, sections 261.31 through 33, which EPA has determined are hazardous. 
No testing is required to determine if a waste is a listed hazardous waste. If it's on the list, it's always regulated as a hazardous waste. Characteristic hazardous waste exhibits one or more of the four hazardous waste characteristics. Toxicity, ignitability, corrosivity, or reactivity. Tests are available to determine whether a waste exhibits one of these characteristics. Used oil can become a hazardous waste if it is mixed with either a listed or a characteristic hazardous waste. Most handlers prefer to keep their used oil separate from hazardous waste right from the start so that their used oil won't be subject to the more stringent hazardous waste regulations. Some handlers may be tempted to mix their characteristic hazardous waste with their used oil in an effort to dilute the hazardous waste and eliminate any characteristics. But mixing is always a risk because it forces you to comply not only with the used oil management standards, but with certain hazardous waste regulations as well. Let's look at an example to help you understand the regulations on mixing. Let's take the example of used oil, which became contaminated with lead through normal use. Used oil contaminated through normal use may be managed as used oil. But then suppose you took that same oil and mixed it with a solvent that contained cadmium, which caused it to exhibit the toxicity characteristic, as well as the ignitability characteristic. You then test the resulting mixture of used oil and characteristic hazardous waste and find that it exhibits toxicity due to the lead contamination from the original oil, not from the waste that was later added. In this example, the mixture is considered a hazardous waste, even though the toxicity characteristic is due to lead contamination from normal use. This is an important point to remember. If you mix used oil with a characteristic hazardous waste and the resulting mixture exhibits any of the four characteristics, you must manage the mixture as a hazardous waste, even if the characteristic resulted from the normal use of the oil prior to being mixed. Wait a minute. Let me make sure I have this straight. You can have used oil that became contaminated with the hazardous substance through normal use and still be allowed to manage it as used oil? That's right. But if you mix your used oil with any type of hazardous waste, that means... You'll have to follow at least some of the hazardous waste requirements. Well, that can only mean one thing. Don't mix! Remember, you may be handling used oil that became contaminated with a characteristic hazardous constituent through normal use and still be allowed to manage it as used oil provided you recycle it. But once you mix your used oil with any type of hazardous waste, whether listed or characteristic, you become subject to all applicable hazardous waste management requirements. Handlers who disregard this advice and elect to mix their used oil with a hazardous waste may actually increase the volume of hazardous waste they have to manage in the long run. They may also invalidate certain opportunities for regulatory exemptions. Service station dealers, for example, should be aware that mixing can cause them to be ineligible for the CERCLA liability exemption. For more information, call the RICRA hotline. EPA discourages mixing for several reasons. Mixing can jeopardize the health and safety of subsequent handlers of the oil who are unaware of its contents. In addition, mixing makes used oil more difficult to manage and limits recycling options. If handlers refrain from mixing their used oil with anything else right from the start, it's more likely that the separate waste streams can and will be recycled for reuse. Used oil managed with recycling in mind could be re-refined into new lubricant. A hazardous waste such as mineral spirits could be distilled to create a new solvent product. Mixed together, however, these two substances become much more difficult to manage and recycle. EPA is aware that the types of waste most likely to be mixed with used oil are certain listed halogenated solvents, such as chlorinated brake cleaners and degreasers. For that reason, EPA uses total halogen content as an indicator of hazardous waste mixing. If the used oil contains over 1,000 parts per million total halogens, then EPA assumes that the used oil was mixed with a hazardous waste. This is what EPA calls the presumption of hazardous waste mixing in the management standards. As a handler, you're responsible for making the 1,000 parts per million total halogen determination, even if you did not mix your used oil with a halogenated solvent. Either you must demonstrate how you know that the used oil does not exceed 1,000 parts per million total halogens, 
EPA refers to this as applying knowledge, or you must test the oil to determine the total halogen content. If you're testing the used oil for total halogens, you can either use field tests, which can be completed on the spot, or laboratory tests. For field tests, EPA suggests using ChlorDetect 1000, QuantiChlor Kit, or ChlorDetect Q4000. If you want to use a laboratory test for greater accuracy, EPA suggests using X-ray fluorescence spectrometry, oxidative combustion and microcolometry, or bomb combustion followed by either anion chromatography or titration with silver nitrate. The tests EPA recommends can be found in Test Methods for Evaluating Solid Waste, publication number SW846. For more information on test methods, call the Methods Information Communication Exchange or MICE service. The MICE service can provide valuable information about RICRA-related methods and serves as the first step in the resolution of some problems. The MICE service can be reached at 703-821-4690. If you did not mix your used oil with a regulated hazardous waste, but it still exceeds 1,000 parts per million total halogens, EPA's regulations allow you to challenge the presumption that your used oil is mixed with hazardous waste. In the management standards, this is called rebutting the mixing presumption. Handlers whose oil exceeds 1,000 parts per million total halogens are responsible for rebutting the mixing presumption if they wish to handle the oil according to the management standards. This is true of all oil you handle, whether you generated it or not. You could rebut the presumption that the used oil had been mixed with a regulated hazardous waste in one of two ways. One way to do this would be to demonstrate how you know that the used oil was not mixed with a hazardous waste. Again, the management standards refer to this as applying knowledge. You could also test the oil to demonstrate that mixing has not occurred. Let's look first at how you could apply knowledge to rebut the mixing presumption. Suppose your used oil was a lubricant that originally contained additives with high levels of halogens, which cause your oil to exceed 1,000 parts per million total halogens. In this case, it may be possible to show, perhaps through documentation obtained from the manufacturer of the lubricant, that your used oil originally contained certain ingredients that were high in halogens, but that were neither listed nor identified as hazardous wastes. You also could provide a hazardous waste manifest for the entire quantity of halogenated wastes produced on site to show that these substances were not mixed with used oil. Together, these types of documentation may enable you to rebut the presumption that your used oil had been mixed with a hazardous waste. You could also rebut the presumption that your used oil was mixed with a hazardous waste by providing test results to show that your used oil does not contain significant concentrations of any one hazardous halogenated constituent. In general, 100 parts per million or more should be considered a significant concentration, but any concentration of a hazardous waste not likely to have come in contact with your oil during normal operations at your facility may be considered significant. In addition, federal and state regulations may differ on the definition of significant concentrations of certain hazardous wastes. EPA recommends using one of the following test methods to determine the content of individual halogenated constituents in your used oil. GC HECD capillary column technique or GCMS, also a capillary column technique. You could not rebut the mixing presumption by diluting your used oil in order to reduce the total halogens. Diluting in this case would simply increase the volume of hazardous waste you'd be required to manage if the presumption could not otherwise be rebutted. Because used oil is a recyclable resource, EPA assumes that handlers will opt for recycling. In the standards, this is referred to as the recycling presumption. Even if you opt to dispose, you are still required to follow the management standards until you either send the used oil for disposal or dispose of it yourself. Keep in mind, however, that disposal is banned in some states. In these states, used oil is generally managed as a hazardous waste. Handlers who opt to dispose face an additional requirement. They must make a hazardous waste determination about their used oil prior to disposing of it to determine whether it exhibits any of the four hazardous waste characteristics. If the used oil exhibits any of the four hazardous waste characteristics, it must be managed as a hazardous waste, regardless of how the characteristic was imparted to the used oil. 
If it does not exhibit any of the hazardous waste characteristics, it may be disposed of as a non-hazardous solid waste. Remember, the hazardous waste regulations do not apply to used oil that has not been mixed and is either en route to or in the process of being recycled. Therefore, handlers who recycle their used oil are only required to make the 1,000 parts per million total halogen determination. They are not required to make a hazardous waste determination. Jeez, a hazardous waste determination sounds like a gigantic hassle. Yeah, definitely not fun. But wait a sec. If you don't mix your used oil with the hazardous waste, and you can show that you didn't... Yeah? And you recycle the used oil rather than dispose of it... Yeah? Then you don't have to make a hazardous waste determination, right? Right. <sighs> That's a no-brainer. Recycle. Exactly. Cool. So do you think we could, like, cut to the chase now and tell these folks how to manage their oil already? Let's do it. <laughs> You are now ready to manage your used oil according to the used oil management standards if you have successfully determined the following. That the substance you are handling meets EPA's definition of regulated used oil and that it has not been mixed with a hazardous waste if it is destined for recycling. The management standards are set up according to what type of used oil handler you are. It's possible that you may fall into one or more categories, but the requirements for generators are common to all types of handlers, including collection centers and aggregation points. These requirements relate to storage, response to releases, and transportation. When storing used oil, you must store it in containers and tanks that are in good condition and show no signs of severe rusting, apparent structural defects, or deterioration. You may not store the oil in unlined pits or lagoons. You must also label the containers as used oil. If any used oil is released to the environment, you must stop the release as soon as possible. Contain and clean up the used oil and comply with all emergency response requirements. And recycle the used oil as you would have before it was spilled. If recycling is not possible, you must determine if the used oil exhibits hazardous characteristics and dispose of it appropriately. If you have used oil on rags or other sorbent materials from cleaning up a leak or spill, you should remove as much of the free-flowing used oil as possible and manage it as you would have before it spilled. Once the free-flowing used oil has been removed from these materials, they are not considered used oil and may be managed as a solid waste as long as they do not exhibit a hazardous waste characteristic and are not burned for energy recovery. Whenever possible, use sorbents that are made from recycled and recyclable materials and can be reused after each cleanup. If the used oil spill comes from a leaking container or tank, you must repair, replace, or remove the container or tank immediately. All handlers other than generators must have a secondary containment system in place. A secondary containment system is a dike, berm, or retaining wall and floor that is impervious to oil. In addition, EPA encourages generators to use containment systems to prevent used oil from contaminating the environment and endangering the health and safety of employees. The following used oil handlers must obtain an EPA ID number. Transporters, processors, burners, and marketers. EPA uses 12-digit ID numbers to track used oil. You can obtain an EPA ID number by contacting the EPA Regional Administrator or the appropriate State Director. Used oil generators, collection centers, or aggregation points that plan to move the oil off-site must hire a transporter with a valid EPA ID number. Used oil transporters, processors, burners, and marketers must keep a record of all used oil they accept or deliver and maintain these records for three years. Knowing the final destination of your oil protects both you and the environment. By hiring reputable transporters and recyclers, you'll minimize environmental mishandling and protect yourself from subsequent liability. Any reputable operation that provides testing, transport, and recycling services will be glad to provide you with references and should easily be able to show documentation of compliance with federal and state regulations. Excuse me. What about recycling? Hey, you're so impatient. I was just getting to that. Well, phew. 
I was afraid you were going to skip it. And are you going to tell them how I can be used over and over if they choose to re-refine me instead of throwing me to the flames? Well, I, of course I was going and to... And that they might even be able to reuse me before re-refining me. People forget that part. They always forget this. It's yes, like... I was going to get to that. Would you mind? Sorry. Now let's take a look at some recycling options for handlers of used oil. On-site reconditioning involves removing impurities from the used oil and using it again. While this form of recycling may not restore the oil to its original state, it does prolong the life of the used oil. Industrial cutting or quench oils are good examples of this reuse. Re-refining involves treating used oil to remove all impurities so that it can be used as a base stock for new lubricating oil. This form of recycling is also desirable because it closes the recycling loop by returning the used oil to its original state prior to use. This option can prolong the life of the oil resource significantly. Processing the used oil so it can be burned for energy recovery is a form of one-time recycling to generate heat or to power industrial operations. EPA encourages you to choose the options that prolong the life of the used oil as long as possible. Remember, reusing and re-refining in combination lengthen the life of the oil indefinitely. The used oil management standards are designed to promote recycling by giving handlers maximum flexibility in managing their used oil. At the same time, the standards help handlers limit their liability and avoid the costs associated with managing hazardous waste. And remember, you can close the recycling loop by purchasing products made from re-refined used oil. Used oil is a completely renewable resource. By carefully reviewing and selecting your management options, you can do your part to make sure this valuable resource gets recycled and stays in the loop. Well, that's it. I hope this video helped you understand the used oil management standards better. Remember, you can call the RECRA hotline if you got questions or you need some help. So, I guess that's it for me. I'm uh, gonna go grab something to eat. Uh, not so fast, Ollie. Excuse me? Well, this is the part where you're supposed to review what you learned about the management standards. Okay, one. Hmm. Don't mix used oil with any type of hazardous waste. Mixing limits your recycling options and makes you follow the more stringent hazardous waste regs. Good. Okay, two. Reuse and re-refining are the management options that prolong the life of the oil the longest, which is a very good thing to do. Great. And number three? Okay, three. You should buy recycled used oil products. Used oil products with the Starburst meet very high standards, and it's like they say. If you're not buying recycled, you're not recycling. Fabulous. Looks like you really were paying attention.